Hey, how's it going guys? It's Nate here, and welcome back to another episode of Immersive Skyrim Mods, the series that has sort of become a staple on the channel, where we take a look at a handful of, typically, new-ish mods that I've been playing from the Nexus. It's been nearly a month since our last Symphony to the Modding Community, and since then, an impressive amount of content has been released. And I've also found a couple of slightly older mods that I've totally fallen in love with. So, without any further ado, Argonians and Imperials, today we'll be taking yet another look at five immersive Skyrim mods. Our 14th look, to be exact. Starting off, to call Skyrim's introduction sequence iconic would be a tremendous understatement. A fateful cart ride to the city of Helgen, which should be where the player's life comes to its conclusion, instead ends in a surprise of flames and fury as the dragon Alduin barely interrupts the proceedings in time, buying you time to escape and sending the entire province of Skyrim into confusion and chaos. It's such a popular scene, as you almost no doubt know, the gaming community has memed it to oblivion. However, after your 11th playthrough, you might not find this sequence so funny or inspiring, and you may finally be getting a bit sick of this 15 minute plus episode, and just want to jump right into the game without this barrier. Well, introducing Realm of Lorcan, Freeform Alternate Start by Twin Crows. What this mod does is pretty easy to explain, but difficult to do justice to if you catch my meaning due to its amazing execution. Realm of Lorcan allows you to totally skip that fairly monotonous introduction. And now, when starting a new game, Players won't wake up on a drawn carriage ride, but instead, you'll awake in the majestic Realm of Lorcan, an otherworldly mystical plane of oblivion, where you'll create your character and then be free to make all sorts of other adjustments before entering the game itself. While here, you'll be given complete control over how you start the game and what kind of person you enter Skyrim as. You'll be able to pre-select a Divine's Blessing, pick one of a few different guardian stones, and even interact and trade with a handful of supernatural merchants who can sell you a few certain goods, potions, and armors to start your experience with. On top of that, you can even work with trainers to level up some skills. Though, make no mistake, you're not just gonna jump straight into Skyrim with a full set of Daedric armor and every single skill maxed out. You can only spend 500 coins here, which sounds like a lot, but really isn't, especially considering you're starting from nothing. All this will really be able to buy you is maybe a few levels from a trainer, or a handful of potions and a weapon or two, or maybe a set of steel armor. Just don't think you'll be jumping into Skyrim in an overpowered state. Once you've explored all the Realm of Lorcan has to offer, and customized your character to your liking, you can approach one of a few floating purple gems each of which will teleport you to a different location in the realm of Skyrim, where you can begin the game. You can spawn in front of High Hrothgar, Whiterun, Markarth, Riverwood, Blackreach even. You can jump in virtually anywhere in the game. You can start your game as fast as you like, and how you like. Some viewers are probably already recognizing similarities to Arthmore's famous alternate star Live Another Life mod, which offers a somewhat similar though not quite as large and customizable experience. Overall, with all the freedom Realm of Lorcan offers us, plus the beautiful new environments, it's hard not to recommend this project. Even if you're comfortable with a similar alternative mod, I absolutely must encourage you to check this one out. You will not regret it. Next on our list, chances are that if you're watching this video, you already at least have a passing familiarity with the massive Beyond Skyrim project a modding endeavor being built by literally hundreds of people that seeks to bring nearly every province of Tamriel to life in the Elder Scrolls V's engine. And even some provinces other than Tamriel. Well, the concept is still far from completed. However, the Beyond Skyrim team has recently released what can best be described as a bit of a preview mod that shows off just a teeny tiny slice of what they've created so far. Introducing Beyond Skyrim, Wares of Skyrim. Hey guys, Nate from the future here. Real quick heads up, the mod's name is actually Beyond Skyrim, Wares of Tamriel, not Wares of Skyrim. I realized when editing this video that I had mistyped my script, 
And literally every time I refer to this mod, I called it Wares of Skyrim for some reason. That's not its name, it's Wares of Tamriel. I'm sorry it was late, I was tired. Anyway, just keep that in mind. Back to the regularly scheduled programming. Now, Wares of Skyrim doesn't let us explore any new lands or anything. That's still a ways away. Instead, what it does is introduce a number of custom items the mod team has developed for the other provinces of Skyrim. Let me explain. Once WOS is installed, a new ship will appear in the Dawnstar Harbor, the Dawn's Venture. It's captained by the daring Imperial Merchant, a certain woman by the name of Cardan Apollo. She claims to have sailed all across Tamriel, collecting artifacts and items from nearly every province, and is excited to share them with you. Well, for a price, of course. In total, Captain Apollo sells over 60 totally new, unique items, with their own custom models and textures. Mostly miscellaneous objects and consumables, such as salt rice pottage from Morrowind, or ancient imperial coins from Colovia. Don't forget the unfamiliar board games from the Iliac Bay. All of these things, and so many more, are now available, each coming from various parts of the exotic world beyond Skyrim. However, between all of the miscellaneous furniture pieces and things you can eat, there are also dozens of new weapons, and even a couple of outfits you can buy. Of course, all of these new items are going to be featured in upcoming Beyond Skyrim releases, and the team is using this mod as an outlet to tease what's coming, and showing off what they've already made. Additionally, I must mention, the merchant character has over 100 lines of fully voiced dialogue. And she doesn't just bring goods from her exotic adventures across Tamriel and beyond. She also brings with her a wide variety of stories and tales from each of the provinces. No doubt foreshadowing some of the upcoming Beyond Skyrim storylines. An old sailor once told me about a captain he knew who claimed to have been to Atmora. Was never off the drink afterwards, whimpering about his sunken ship and what have you came upon a bronze relief near Ignal's Barrow. Perhaps it was meant as a tribute to Isgrimor's fallen son. It depicts a long boat at sea. Was it escaping the cold or just seeking a path to Tamriel? Guess we'll never know. So, whether you're just looking to populate your game with more items, or trying to get a sneak peek at what the future lore of Beyond Skyrim is set to be, Wares of Tamriel is absolutely a must download. Coming in at number three, we just got a taste of Beyond Skyrim, but now we'll be going beyond the Elder Scrolls with Archmage Cadgar's Robes by John Skyrim. This mod introduces the robes of Archmage Cadgar from the World of Warcraft series into the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Now, I'll be totally honest, I've never actually played World of Warcraft in my entire life. I'm completely unfamiliar with the character or the franchise. But my gosh if the armor set doesn't look amazing. Available in both 4 and 2K resolutions, it can be exclusively crafted at the Skyforge and White Run, with both red and blue variants, and not requiring any skills to craft. It's pretty easy to get your hands on this set from the get-go. The models are nothing short of extraordinary, and unlike so many other armor mods, these don't have any meshing issues and work well on all races and body types. There's not much more to say about these whimsical, wondrous wares. The next time you're looking for some new rags, make sure you give Archmage Kagar's robes a try. For fourth spot, it's my pleasure to show off what is undeniably the biggest mod of this video. Welcome to Midwood Isle, home of the Sun Elves by Will Evans. Midwood Isle thrusts players to the Isle of Midwood, a small island off the southern coast of Tamriel. For as long as historical records can recall, Midwood Isle has been home to an isolated, unique civilization of Elf, the Sonmer, or the Sun Elves. Here on Midwood, the Sonmer built up a large, prosperous, and peaceful society, occasionally trading with outsiders, but mostly keeping to themselves and living in relative tranquility. All is well in Midwood, or at least it has been. Recently, things are getting weird. People are getting angrier, banditry is becoming more common, and rumor has it that the countryside's been overtaken by necromancers. 
As it turns out, the legendary dark force Zacris has reawoken, and he threatens the way of life, not just for everyone in Midwood, but all of Tamriel, if his goals are fulfilled. Obviously, our objective is to keep that from happening. Overall, the main storyline offers 11 primary quests. Plus, there are 21 side quests available throughout the island, where we can assist the people and engage in miscellaneous tasks. Some bigger than others. In total, the entire island and all the new world space offered is roughly the size of two Skyrim holds. That said, it is jam-packed with content. So many mods that introduce us to new lands often are filled with empty space. Not Midwood. There's various human settlements, banded encampments, dwarven ruins, underground dungeons. There's a lot to do here. There's new items, including five new custom weapons, custom armor textures, new pieces of jewelry. On top of that, two new shouts and eight new spells have been added in. Oh, yeah, and there's even a player home unlocked via side quest that can be upgraded. I originally first heard of Midwood back when it released in August of 2019. Mind you, the overwhelming majority of this project was created by that single developer, Will Evans. At the time of its initial release, Midwood wasn't in the best state. There were multiple bugs, some glitches, and very few of the characters were voice acted. As a result, when I first tried it out, I ultimately decided this wasn't something I wanted to feature on the channel. I was frustrated by a couple of bugs, and the fact that none of the principal characters in the storyline were voice acted made it very difficult for me to be immersed. However, all of that changed in January of 2020, when the mod received a major update, patching much of the bugs and fully voice acting the entire game. Since then, my opinion on this project has completely reversed, and I love it to death. In fact, I actually enjoyed the main questline significantly. It's not exactly one that's going to be driven by your choices, it's a very linear experience, a story being told to you, if you will. But it's a good story, one that I thought was very creative. And in the process of making this video, I actually looked at some of the reviews and posts over on Reddit and the Nexus. And it seems like I'm not alone. The general community consensus appears to be that Midwood offers an excellent storyline. A really amazing description of this mod that I heard that I think sums it up perfectly if you understand is that Midwood can be seen as a somewhat better written version of Falscar, if that makes any sense. It's similar in size, scope, just a really compelling principal narrative. So, if your Dovahkin has solved all of Skyrim's ales, saved Solstheim, and conquered the Forgotten Vale, well, maybe it's time you hop on a boat and head to this oh-so-fascinating Elven Island. And finally, last on our list, when you sell an item to a merchant, do you ever wonder what should happen to it? When you give an iron sword to Carlana, sell a pair of gloves to Advar, or trade a helmet to the Khajiit caravans, what becomes of it? Well, the answer to that question is actually pretty simple and fairly disappointing. It hangs out in said merchant's inventory for a while, capable of being bought back for maybe three or four days, before simply despawning, never to be seen again. Not very immersive if you ask me. Well, mod author Twin Crows, remember him, identified this problem and has built a solution. I give you Bandit and Civil War Economies. Now, these are actually two separate mods. Bandit Economy is its own thing, Civil War Economy is its own thing. But they're meant to be used together and effectively do the same thing. When both are enabled, now items you sell to merchants can actually end up in the hands of bandits and soldiers on either side of the Civil War. Meaning, you can indeed find that expensive Daedric battle axe you sold to Frida for 2,500 gold, many weeks later on the battlefield, being used against you. And, hypothetically, if you kill its wielder, you can take it back and sell it again. Whether an item you sell to a merchant ends up in the hands of an Imperial soldier, a Stormcloak warrior, or a bandit, largely depends on who that merchant is and where they are. Selling to any merchant comes with a small chance that your weapon or armor piece might find its way into the hands of a bandit, but fences are especially prone to this behavior, 
and merchants with high sneak or crime-associated skills are far more likely to sell your items to Skyrim's outlaws. Otherwise, your goods will typically be sold to whichever player of Skyrim Civil War controls the location your merchant is in. It should be pointed out that hold guards are considered soldiers and affected by this too. So you can see guards in Whiterun walking around with masks of Clavicus Vile, and forces in Markarth walking around with ancient swords, such as the very one wielded by Mirak, provided you sold those items in Imperial territory. This can theoretically be used to offer you a means to bolster whichever side you're on. If you want the Imperials to have access to the greatest equipment in the world, well, just make sure you sell that stuff at Solitude rather than Windhelm. I will say my biggest frustration with this mod is I feel like I find weapons I've previously sold to merchants on the battlefield a little too often. Like, it gets a little weird when you storm a fort and three guys come at you all with a different quest item you sold to the same vendor a few days ago. You immediately recognize it and the immersion is kind of corrupted there. If you don't sell to merchants very often, there's not really gonna be a problem here. But if you do, well, you'll quickly notice a trend. So keep that in mind. No matter, Bandit and Civil War economies offer an interesting concept that, despite their flaws, I still find to be radically superior to the default experience. So, it goes without saying, considering the fact it's on this video and I've already given it so much praise, I absolutely recommend you give these mods a try. And with that, we are going to wrap up our 14th episode of Immersive Skyrim Mods. My Talos, I think we've been doing this for over a year now, maybe a year and a half. Anyway, thanks for stopping by, everybody. Which of these creations was your own personal favorite? What are your own experiences and reviews for some of these? And what mod should I cover in the future? Leave a comment down below. As always, like ratings are very much appreciated. Again, thanks for watching, and I hope to catch you all in my next video. Peace out, everyone.